Let's turn this raw photo into a gloomy dark forest scene using Photoshop. As always you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the description of this video and now let's begin. Ok, the first thing I want to say I have heavily cropped the image because I like how those trees on the sides are nicely framing this trail leading into the forest. So I took quite a bit away from each side and keep it nicely centered. What I want to do first is to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the contrast and for a scene like this, less contrast is really really helpful in enhancing this foggy mood. So next up we want to open up this basic panel. I guess we can right away work on the white balance. I want this image to be a lot colder so I'm going to drop the temperature. But I'm very very careful doing that because I don't want to lose those very nice looking green tones. At the same time I could bring up the tint just a notch to make the colors look a little more natural. Now for the exposure of this image. As I said I want to make it really really dark. So the first thing I'm going to do is to bring down the exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a bit with the fact in mind that I'm going to later add light back using masking. I'm going to drop the shadows as well, making the scene even darker. And at this point we can add back some whites, just playing around with the light here. And I also want to bring down the contrast, since as I said, reducing contrast really works well for those foggy forest scenes. Just like that. At this point I am going to add just a little bit of texture. This will help giving things like those trees some more sharpness. And I'm going to drop the overall clarity. This will make everything softer. And of course since we are working with the foggy scene we can make this stronger by bringing down the dehaze. And bringing down the dehaze will also make the image brighter. Just keep that in mind. This is looking really really good so far. I also want to bring up the vibrance to boost the saturation. But that's about it for the basic adjustments. So, so far we went from this original raw file to this way darker scene. Now let's bring in some light and we're going to do that with masking. So let's open up the masking panel. For this scene that's pretty easy. We do have some kind of framing around the center. And I want to make use of that to make this center area a lot brighter. And I want to make it look like there's some light coming down from above. While the surrounding area will get darker. Let's start this by using a radial gradient. And I'm going to make a really really big one like this. Covering all the height of the image. Place it just in the center like this. And in here I'm just going to bring up the exposure very carefully. And I'm also going to bring up the whites. Here we can bring them up all the way since this will affect only the brightest parts of this area. So this instantly looks much much better. And we can further work on that by using a second radial gradient. This time however I'm just going to place it on the top like this. I think that's a good spot. And again I want to bring up the whites. And I also want to bring up the highlights, which works really well to add brightness in this particular spot. And again, I want to further bring down the contrast in here, just enhancing this foggy look of this area. And for the same effect, we can bring up the blacks. And this does look great. Now let's work on the surrounding areas for a moment. I'm going to use a linear gradient for the bottom part like this. And I want to drop the exposure, but I don't want to drop it too much because I'm risking underexposure, as you can see looking at the histogram. What I can do else is to just bring down the whites. This way I will make the area darker without risking that underexposure. So that's looking good. Then I want to create another linear gradient for the side. Thing just like this. And I'm again bringing down the exposure. Very very careful here because I don't want to have any underexposure. Now there is a little bit but I think it's okay. And I want to add a third linear gradient on the other side as well. Just like this. 
and again bring down the exposure. Beautiful. At this point, I do want to introduce some more light coming down in the center, so let's use another radial gradient. I think I make it a little wider like that, and I'm placing it at the very top. All I need to do is to bring up the exposure to create this very cool light effect. And I also want to use the radial gradient right there on the trail where it goes into the forest. And I want to make this area brighter, just to have some kind of bright spot down here on the ground as well. So again, just bring up the exposure. And since this area is kind of mushy due to the reduced contrast, I am going to introduce some clarity as well, giving this area some more detail. Perfect. I think we're almost done. I just want to add one more linear gradient right here for the bottom right corner. And again, bring down the exposure to just kind of emulate a vignetting effect going around the center of this image. So that looks really, really good. We went from this slightly edited raw file to this with just a bit of masking. So it looks so much better. At this point, it's time to do some color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. Here I basically want to push the saturation of the orange tones, the yellow ones. Let's also bring up the greens, aqua and the blue tones. Not much happening here, just a little more vibrance being added to this image. And I also want to make use of the split toning in the color grading panel. Here it's a little different than usual. Let's start with the highlights and Usually I would go with something like a warm color tone for the highlights, but in this case, since we're working with a dark gloomy forest scene, I want to try something in the cold range for the highlights. And I'm also not going to raise the saturation too crazy. I just want to make this color a little more visible. So that looks good. Let's go into the midtones. Here I want to work with a green color tone because of course we are in the forest and this just fits. Again, I'm not going to raise the saturation too crazy. Just want to add a subtle hint of green to the midtones like this. And then for the shadows, again, I want to work with a cold color tone somewhere around here and slightly bump up the saturation. Perfect. Then I do want to head into the effects panel where I can add a little more vignetting by bringing down this slider. And by creating this vignetting effect, we are just creating a more focused area right there in the center where we want it. Finally, let's go into the calibration tab. I'm slightly going to bring down the blue primary hue and I'm raising the saturation just to make the colors look a little nicer. And that's it for the raw adjustments. I'm also not going to apply any sharpening since we are working with a very foggy scene like this. So we went from this raw file to this image just by applying raw adjustments. So everything you saw here, you can do in Lightroom Classic as well if you want. But now we need to do some further Photoshop adjustments. So let's open up this object. The first thing I want to do is work on that light spot in the center. I'm going to the adjustment layers and I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer. Now invert the layer mask by selecting it and hitting Ctrl I. Then I'm grabbing the brush with the foreground color set to white and we need to bring up the brush opacity. And I want to target this very area right here in the center. What we can do here is to bring in some more light by bringing this point down to the left. This will drop the contrast a little bit, but don't worry, we can enhance it somewhat by bringing the black point to the right. Just be very careful to not overdo it, otherwise it might look strange. But this looks great. Then I'm not quite happy with the saturation of that trail leading into the forest. So let's create another adjustment layer, this time hue and saturation. Under the master dropdown menu, let's choose a yellow and just bring down the saturation. Of course, this will affect the whole image. So again, I'm going to invert that layer mask, then grab the brush with the foreground color set to white, and I'm just going to brush over this trail. So this looks much more natural. And at this point, I want to apply just a little bit of dodging. 
to make those trees on each side just a bit brighter. Therefore I'm going to create a new layer and I'm switching its blending mode to overlay. So for the dodging part, I want to use luminosity masks. You can create them somehow using Photoshop, but that's a little more complicated. In order to save time, I'm using the TK panel for that. This is a paid plugin, but there's also a free version available with all the things needed for this dodging part. I want to select the highlights of those trees. And that's the reason for me to use a lights mask. If I click on that lights two layer, you can see there's still a little bit of that tree selected. So that's perfect. Now I want to activate the layer mask mode, click on two, and we are getting this lights two luminosity mask applied as a layer mask on the overlay layer. Then I'm grabbing the brush, set the foreground color to white, and then I'm just going to carefully paint over the trees. At first, this might not seem as much, but let me deactivate the layer so you can see the difference from before to after. So let me repeat this on the other side, just carefully brushing over the tree. All right, that looks great. I could in fact also dodge the trail in the center a little bit. I think I'm going to bring down the brush opacity for that. Just going to add some more highlights right in here. All right, perfect. So here's the image without dodging and here with the dodging applied. Very, very subtle, but it's really, really a helpful effect. At this point, what really bothers me is the upper right corner. So to fix that, let's merge everything. I'm going to hit Shift, Alt, Control, E to do that. And I'm going to grab the spot healing brush. Actually, let's try the new remove tool. And I'm just going to paint over those bright spots in order to remove them. Let's hit that check icon. Actually, I do think the spot healing brush might be a better use for this area. Yes, that's looking much, much better. So one more thing I want to do is to add just a little more contrast. Therefore, I'm using another levels adjustment layer and just bring that point for the highlights a little further to the left. And maybe that center point a little further to the right. But that's it. So here we have the final image. I hope this Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.